So we woke up at 4 p.m. today uh, and had sex. Uh, mostly just sleep and get on stage and have sex. And it's actually a miserable existence. If you could imagine what a struggle. This is the daily struggle of waking up, playing music, having sex, and just being a zombie and a robot in a world of zombies and robots. And you guys ever butt dial somebody? Because I ball sack dialed someone recently. It took years. All right, welcome to the show. No clapping, no clapping. I, uh, <laughs> what do you guys think about this? This is a clear channel billboard I saw in Riverside Drive and it says, eat shit and die. Can you believe they let put that on a clear channel billboard? All right, you tell a joke. <laughs> um, bah, 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 bah. My name's Pat Reagan. I'm here to tell the truth, the whole truth, and everything but the truth. <laughs> Some people have resting bitch face. I have resting school shooter face. <laughs> you better laugh. <laughs> World so PC, you can't even stick your finger in a kid's mouth anymore. Um, I, uh, I, I, w I wrote, I, I wrote in my, and I wrote in the guest book at my grandma's funeral. Now, is it bad that I uh, signed it? Dick hurts. <laughs> ah, where are my jokes? Where are my jokes? Okay, I'm the alpha in my household. Uh, the, I'm the alpha at around my house, around my house, well, I guess we can say that I'm the alpha, and I live alone. <laughs> Alright, this is a Frank Sinatra song that never came out, it goes, If I wear the moons, if I, if I can make it there, I'll make it. Anywhere and the moon in your eyes makes me cry Tears of blood, crowns of thorns, skibbity-doo And I punch my wife and then I take a knife and I slit Some rando in the face from head to toe Hit it, man! Uh, you guys, <laughs> I'm a bit of a, a music file <laughs> I remember being 14 years old and uh, seeing a uh, seeing a toddler stack building blocks and being like, I could do that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the time in Indonesia is five o'clock. The time in Windonesia is. <laughs> Funny joke, dude. I had sex once. Worst ten years of my life. I got ghosted by a girl. Probably should have known something was up when she told me her name was Casper. Yeah. Ouch is right. I turned back and the back of my shirt says ouch. That's our bit. You guys like biracial people? No. Are you guys pro biracial people? Because my feelings are mixed. Uh, I, was, I was I was in a I was in a bar and I, there was a there was a musical group on the radio playing. They were playing a cover of The Cure. And the, the, the cover of the cure, the cure cover song was so bad that it accomplished the cure's original goal because it made me want to fucking kill myself. I was talking to a friend of mine about Russia. I was like, man, I don't give a damn about Russia. He said, tell that to all the gay people rotting in Russian dungeons. I was like, from what I hear, gay people like dungeons. All right, back in. I'm back engaged. I went away <laughs> for a minute telling that Russia joke. Uh, you guys ever take a dog to the pound? I mean, fuck a dog. I'm young, dumb, and full of commendable family values. 
I'm a serial monogamist. I, uh, he agrees. <laughs> right, I'm dating, I'm dating a, a girl named uh, Cinnamon uh, Toast Crunch. Before that, I dated a Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> you guys think that's funny? Good. Oh. <laughs> Alright, this is a song called Chinese Pussy. Ch I got a Chinese pussy. It's slanted in size. Oh, but do he oh, yeah. Thank you. You gotta try to have fun, guys. Or else, why am I here locked in this basement? You know, the uh, scientists say the earth won't have bees much longer. Bees nuts. <laughs> Man, that's, you know there's such thing as being too loose on stage. You're so loose you can't, you just, you just... I was watching a, uh, I was watching a documentary um, about this... Uh, about this farmer who would, he, he farmed ant heads and he would like take the ant heads and then he would, uh, he would put helmets on them and he would uh, bicycle them down the street in, uh, in like school areas at uh, 45 miles per hour until they got pulled over by the, uh, by the coppers and uh, the coppers would uh, turn to nickels. And then uh, I would put dimes in my parking meter and I would just go take a nap while my meter ran out and people come up and knock on the window and I'd be like, not now, I'm, I'm jacking off. And I wasn't, but uh, that got them away. And uh, I imagine opening my eyes and everyone being gone. I opened my eyes and it was just a desert. I was just in the middle of a desert and it was just the Clint Eastwood, like, bam, bam, bam. Gunslinger type scenario. <laughs> ah, guys. Um, I, uh... Oh, uh, this German tap dancing. Okay. <laughs> Technically, it's a joke. <laughs> I have a step counter on my, on my phone, but I always double the number of steps it says I took because Jesus walks beside me everywhere I go. <laughs> Alright, I want to play some music. I want to play some music. Hello. Hello, my name's Pat, and this is called, uh, whoa, <laughs> music. Come deep inside the canyons and deep inside the mine, come follow, follow, follow. Inside the ocean, in the dark and salty brine, come follow, follow, follow. For I am a man, and you are a woman, and we are best friends. So come deep inside the canyon and. Inside the mind, come follow, follow, follow. From the deep and tumbling oceans to the dark and stormy skies, and the caves and the fires inside the caves. From the mountains to the trees to the birds.
staring at the wall There's a red telephone, you know I pick it up and give it a call I call my ex-girlfriend, you know what she says? She says, you're no good, skinny motherfucker Go behind my back into the arms of another Don't pick me up just cause you fell down You're no good, skinny motherfucker Go behind my back into the arms of another Don't pick me up just cause you fell down just cause you fell down, motherfucker. to guitar enough. I don't need to have a lifetime of clapping and singing along to, a, 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 to when 25% of the audience likes what I'm doing. For my whole life. It's, 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 you're no good, skinny motherfucker. Go behind my back into the... You're no good, skinny motherfucker. Go behind my back into the arms of another. Don't pick me up just cause you fell down. No good, skinny motherfucker. Go behind my back until the arms of another. Don't pick me up just cause you fell down. Don't pick me up just cause you fell down, motherfucker. Go behind my back into the arms of another, don't pick me up just cause you fell down. You're no good, skinny motherfucker. Go behind my back into the arms of another, don't pick me up just cause you fell down. Don't pick me up just cause you fell down. Don't pick me up just cause you fell down. Don't pick me up just cause you fell down. Oh, don't pick me up just cause you fell down. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't pick me up just cause you fell down. Well, you don't pick me up just cause you fell down I, I still pick my friend over you <laughs> Well, you're a saving truck, like, how do I, well, where should I say? Well, how does it feel to be a dick on the stage every day? <laughs> oh, it feels bad, uh, well, I don't know, do do oh, 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 hello, Dolly <laughs> Hello Dolly, well, hello, Dolly, it's so nice to have you back where you belong, you're looking swell, Dolly, I can tell, Dolly, you're still growing, you're still showing, you're still showing strong. You're no good, skinny motherfucker. Go behind my back into the arms of another. Don't pick me up just cause you fell down. You're no good, skinny motherfucker. Go behind my back into the arms of another. Don't pick me up just cause you fell down. Don't pick me up just cause you fell down. Pick me up just cause you fell down. Guys, let's get some energy in here right about now. Let's get more energy than that. Let's give a lot of fucking love and a lot of energy 
out of your hands. Because it's Monday night, and you know what that means? That it's time for the number one live podcast in the world. You are here in the belly room of the world famous comedy store for this Kill Tony. For a brand new episode of Kill Tony, here's Kill Tony. Hello! Hi, everybody. How are you? Yeah. Welcome to the number one live podcast in the world. You guys ready for a fun night or what? Yeah. People still shuffling around up there. Look at this. Fucking up. I like it like this. One more time for the great Pat Reagan playing a little uh, Pat and James for you. The great Brian Redman is here. We're going to do this guys? shit again. This is episode 200 of Motherfucker Something. Yeah. Celebrating four years of this show. This is episode 220 or something crazy. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, the great Ryan J. Ebelt is here, drawing right in front of us. Woo. Blank sheet of paper. He's the guy that drew uh, that Kill Tony poster right there. Woo. And uh, that's all available at RyanJEbelt.com. Official Kill Tony merch. Uh, I'm going on tour, big tour. Yeah. I'm doing Houston this weekend, Fort Worth, uh, um, and the Monster Energy Outbreak tour is coming up for me, which is me doing rock venues and theaters all around the country. All those tickets are available at TonyHinchcliffe.com. Yeah. We've got a show Wednesday at the Lab Factory. Uh, also, Death Squad Toronto next month, July. Uh, I'm also going to uh, Alaska. Tickets are going on sale tomorrow. We say that not for you guys in the audience, but for the podcast listeners all around the world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, should we bring up our guests? Yeah. All right, let's start with some guests. I always promise and give you two of the funniest comedians in the world, two of my funniest friends. Tonight is no different. Put your hands together for the present and the motherfucking future. It's the great. Jerron Horton and Willie Hunter, everybody. Oh, shit. The writer of I'm Dying Up Here on Showtime. You want to know who writes that shit? This guy. He's the writer. The Carmichael Show on NBC. Who writes all of that funny stuff? That guy, right there. Guys I've been friends with for years that are fucking making it. These are two dudes that I, who just like me, that went from being a motherfucking door guy at the store to making six figures at least a year. Give it up for these two motherfuckers right here. Comedy business fucking hustlers. Two of my funniest, most creative friends. Willie, of course, is part of the wave on uh, Roast Battle, one third of the powerful wave. The writer of The Carmichael Show, one of my favorite stand-up comedians, one of my favorite dancers. That's a, that's a great compliment. I saw you win yeah. that dance competition a couple weeks ago. Goddamn blew my mind. I was stumbling up here to go pee or something. <laughs> so I saw this guy in full Michael Jackson with a whole... Yeah, this place it. was bumping. Yeah, yeah. Smooth criminal. That's, the, that's what I did. It was fucking awesome. The great Jaron Horton, another one of my best pals. What's up, uh, man? Forever. Th- just finished uh, writing season one of I'm Dying Up Here on Showtime. This fucking guy wrote a big boy, big fucking big kid show. <laughs> so fucking I watched that shit so we did season two. So the- I saw I'm Dying Up Here. I've been preaching about it for weeks. Thank Literally, you. I mean, it moved, the, it moved me. I'm Perfect. so excited to watch all the other episodes. Carmichael show is by far my favorite show that NBC has had on its network for fucking. And your mom, decades. your mom loves the show too. Yeah, everybody loves the Carmichael insult? show. And <laughs> hey, your mom, your hey, mom loves, loves the Carmichael show. And it's also available on Netflix, which I think is fucking awesome. Yeah. So here we are. I'm here with two of my funniest pals, Brian Redband. We ready to do this shit? Let's mm-hmm. bring up the band. I love my band. I'm convinced that I, I sound a little trumpy when I talk about them, but I'm convinced I have the best band. Uh, I think my band's better than any other band. Yeah. It's the Kill Tony band, ladies and gentlemen. It's Pat Reagan, Jeremiah Watkins, and Joel Jimenez. Motherfucking Joel there. They do different, they do a different, so they do different characters every week and they commit to them. You never know what they're gonna come out as and what the characters are gonna be. Oh. Oh shit! This is Harry Potter. Of course. Wow. Oh, look at this. 
that fake chair of De Maya disappear. There's no chair of Maya. It's Josh, Josh Martin, can I get a whiskey? Ja can I get a Jameson and Gingeroso? <laughs> Clearly in Harry Potter attire. I'm loving it. This is fucking awesome. One more time for the great Pat Reagan and Joel Jimenez. They're here with us. intrigued with the wizardry that's going to be happening over there tonight. One of my favorite things in the world. So the band is in place. The guests are here. Red Band is the soundboard. Ryan J is drawing. Everything is ready to rock. I have a bucket with over fucking a ton of names tonight. It's a lot of people. Put your hands together for all these crazy comedians. That, uh, and sometimes it's a normal human being that we need for 60 seconds. And then you're just a guest on a podcast after that. It's pretty fucking awesome. Uh, so much so that we're the number one live podcast, podcast. in the world. Podcast. Sounds like magic. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, where it's like, pull your name out, you perform for 60 seconds, you know your 60 seconds is up when you hear the sound of a kitten. Oh, we can barely hear that little baby kitten. What does that sound like, Brian? <laughs> there you go. Right. That means wrap it up then, or else you're going to bring up the angry West Hollywood bear. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> you got a zoo of sound bites over there. Yeah, a zoo of sound bites. A zoo. <laughs> <laughs> you got a zoo. A zooba. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's how I pronounce zoo. Why, 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 why do you have to say that like an 80 year old black man? <laughs> because on the inside of an 80 year old black man. Is that true? Yeah, that's why I write for a show that takes place in the 70s on Showtime at 10 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> so, uh, let's fucking do this shit. You guys ready to start the show? Woo! All the pieces are in place. We have more fun on Mondays than anybody else in the world. And it gives a little something like this. Your first comedian performing 60 seconds tonight goes by the name of Gallet Levi. People always fuck up my name, like you. I've gotten delete, which is like weird. That's like saying, oh, I was gonna name the kid abortion, but let's just call it delete. <laughs> I've gotten Gillette. The best a man can get, what? <laughs> All right, when, my, uh, when I got married, my best friend from Baltimore was like, girl, you better let your man eat it like it's groceries or else some other hoe will. I was like, really? Okay, I went home like, so Schmenkele, you want to eat my tuchus? <laughs> he was like, ugh, people do that? Is it kosher? Ugh, I just had dairy blintzes for breakfast. I'm not so sure the two would mix. Maybe we should call our rabbi. I was like, yeah, call the rabbi. <laughs> yeah. Oh, could you get his wife's matzo ball recipe, please? Mm, so good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm Galit Levy. There you go. Galit. Galit, man. You are one of the funniest little boys I love. Like. <laughs> You have, to, you have to wait until the people are done cracking up. <laughs> so, so. I know you're not used to that type of like having to wait for a laughter thing, but uh, you have to listen for it. Galit, where are you from? Baltimore. How long have you been in LA? About 10 years. How long have you been doing stand up? Mm, eight years. Now, I've met you before. Uh, we've done a show or two together, I think, up here, and you're a clown, right? Yeah. You, you do that as a job, right? Uh, kind of, yeah. How, how long have you been a clown for? A long time. Nice! I've got to pause it before going back to the thing. <laughs> it's so funny. 
<laughs> how'd, you be, how'd you get into the closet? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, my vagina makes noises. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Go eat. How long have you been in the clown? I already asked that. I, uh, How'd you get into that? I had a clown teacher from Ringling Brothers Clown College at School for the Arts in Baltimore City where Tupac and Jada Pinkett went. Oh, oh Tupac with the Clown College? Two Hong Shakur. Two Hong Shakur. He had a pair of giant red Nikes on. <laughs> Did he get shot with like one of those like those waters that shoot no, flowers? Flowers that shoot water. Those waters that shoot flowers. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. That, that would be funny. A gangster clown that has like a gold yeah. pistol that shoots water. Drive by. I thought she was good. Um, my favorite. Oh wait, what part? Is, wait, what part's this? What are you, are you going into? I, just, about, I thought we were, like, we we're like showing love to the comics on a minute, right? All right. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I wouldn't. I didn't get a chance to say my. I think Jerron just decided he wants to fuck her right in front of us. Everybody. Did you guys just notice that all once? I enjoyed the twerking. That was my favorite He's, part. Did you? Yeah, it was cool. It was like a surprise. It's better than like. But did you laugh stuff. at the twerking? No. <laughs> it was entertaining, though. <laughs> Willie's just jealous because I twerk better than he does. That's true. <laughs> First of all, I don't think that's true. I saw Willie win a dance competition a few days ago. I twerk pretty hard. <laughs> what do you do for fun, Galit? What do I do for fun? Yeah, when you're not doing stand up or being a clown. If I can smoke weed. Do you ever do you do you ever, do you ever scare kids on purpose being a clown? You ever no. do scary things? No. Scariest thing you've ever done in your clown costume? Do you ever have sex in it? Uh, no. That's a yes. I, I that that uh, is a yes. So whatever she says after that's a lie. Do you like tie dicks into like animals and shit? <laughs> <laughs> Akio Boner! <laughs> you've never seen this show before? You seemed really like uh, shocked when you were up here. You've never seen this? You've never been up here? I, I watched you guys online, but oh. yeah. I haven't been on stage. And I had a, my brand new retainer in my mouth in the back. And I wasn't ready for you guys. I've never, factor, yeah. your, I've never factored that into uh, the bucket for <laughs> retainer. What if, what if someone is on retainer time and I pull their name out of the bucket? Yeah, I was like, oh shit. Uh. Oh, that's so gross. <laughs> so, so are you saying your boy or your husband won't go down on you? That's, that was the point of the joke, right? Eat, eat the food like groceries, he won't do that? Uh, yeah, that he didn't do that. He'd never done it. You brought it up and he's, he said no. Yeah. You brought up eating the, eating the booty? Well, that's what I was told to do. Do you have like a grotesque, you know, like labia? Like it's a- Wait a second, no, that's a different, that's a different topic, Brian. You can't just start to, oh, Brian. Hermione. <laughs> it's called protein. Gleet, uh, like in your 10 years of doing stand-up comedy, how much like time do you think you've acquired? A lot of time. That's an interesting answer. I yeah. can see why I don't know who you are after you've been doing it for 10 years. Uh, very non-descriptive answer. You wanna, wanna nail it a little bit more? Uh, I just performed with Michael Blackson in DC. I featured for him. I performed with Lunel. Um, that's not what I asked. I said, how much time do you think you have? I get a lot of time. I don't blog it. What do you have? Like a little fucking Fitbit for stand-up comedy? Never, you've, nev you've never, you've never, yes. you've never heard of this before when you do stand-up comedy. Yeah. I've been doing stand-up a long time. I do a lot of urban rooms. I was. Uh, Me too. Me too. That's a different. That's still a different urban. question. Yeah, that's where the clown comes. I roasted the dog <laughs> shit out of Michael Blackson on the Snoop roast. You should see it. I, I, said, I said that I met him in hair and makeup, and uh, I met him in hair and makeup, and they were rubbing a charcoal briquette against his face. <laughs> you have to see Michael Blackson and how hard he laughed. You guilty white idiots. <laughs> uh, Lou loved you in the roast, and yeah. when I performed with her, she said, I remind her of you. Really? She said, I'm she the said, female oh, version of you. You are maybe an, an even more male version of me, if you ask me. <laughs> Galit Levi, there she goes, everybody. She's on Twitter at Galit Levi Comedy. It's more of a, it's more of a diss on me than you. Are you happy? I agree. There she goes, Galit Levi, everybody. That's what I would be like if I was like just a, a, 
I like did yoga or something like that. If I was just a little more feminine, that would be me. I can't believe I missed Quidditch practice for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I pulled another name out of the bucket. You guys get it now. Put your hands together for Chris Drulia. <laughs> this friend who he tries to be funny but he always comes off as immature like he's the type of guy who will walk in my room and just grab a random object and he'll be like what is this dude your butt plug and I'm like no nah, man that's a pen I'm like we could try though I, I gotta weird him out cuz that's a stupid question he's gonna get a stupid answer same guy walks into my room and he grabs my laptop stand and it's kind of a contraption like it folds out into a laptop stand and he's like, what is this, a sex toy? And I'm like, yeah. I put my laptop on it and watch porn. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of porn, Tinder's cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm always freaked out after a Tinder, Tinder rendezvous. Like I get home and I'm always like, did I get something? And the other day I was sitting on the toilet going through symptoms that I thought I had. And I came across mono and I was like, I think I got mono. And, and just as I thought that, I looked, I dropped a log and I was like, is that the Wait, 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 Chris, hold on, wait a minute. Hold on, let's slow it down a little bit. Gosh, man. All right, finish it. You dropped a log. Are you talking about pooping, by the way? Alright, go ahead, go ahead. Finish it. I, I was on... Um... Wait, 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 the snake is out. Hold on a second. Oh, wait. It's a little bit mad. The tensions are high. Okay. Whoa, whoa. Hey. It's okay. I speak parcel time. <laughs> Patty motherfucking Reagan. Bad chat available. Chris, finish that joke. So you drop in the log and... Yeah, uh, so I was sitting on the toilet and I was on my phone going through like, hello MD, or just some medical website thinking like, oh, do I got mono? And uh, just as I thought that, I dropped the log and I was like... Wait, how many times did you drop that log? Shut up, man! No, we're not allowed to no. yell, you piece of shit. Hey, somebody tell fucking Mumford's Bray Wyatt looking nephew here with the beard. Beard... Hey, shut up! <laughs> All right, start over from before. I want to hear the drop the log part again. <laughs> start from before the drop the log part. Right, so I was sitting on the toilet, and I, was, <laughs> and I was going through the symptoms that I thought I had, and I was like, I think I got mono. And just as I thought that, I dropped the log, and I, and, I, and I looked down, and I was like, is that a monologue? <laughs> It was worth it. That he was killed it. it. <laughs> he turned it all around in the end. Like, I'm so glad we asked for it. It was like when the, it's like when the DJ's like playing your favorite song, but then just takes it back a little bit. That's a point for a little bit. Oh my god. Oh. Wow, Chris. So you came out of the second row. I'm guessing. Uh, uh, where, how long? Have you, how many times? What's your stand-up uh, career look like? First time, right? First time. Wow. wow. Yeah. It's like one, right? <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Oh, Lord. All right, Chris, so this is your first time doing stand-up. You brought it all around in the end. Honestly, it's a pretty stupid joke that we all laughed really hard at. It's not as great as you, we all, any of us, really think it is. But it was so dumb that it was perfect. Um, but that's fucking awesome. Let me guess, you're a Marine, you're from San Diego. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. What's your backstory? What's, what's... Uh, backstory is, I've been, uh... Where are you from, Chris? I'm from, <laughs> <laughs> I'm from La Habra, which is like, if you're going to Brea, it's the city right before that. So right by the Brea comedy scene. Comedy. Boy and crap. Uh, <laughs> I'm always fascinated by like how do people, when do they come up with their jokes? Did you come up with that joke while sitting on the toilet, or was this something you... I, I legitimately thought that and laughed to myself. 
What do you do for work? Uh, I work in the lo logistics department. I'm the manager. It's kind of boring. It's just shipping. Where at? What are you managing? Yeah, it's boring. Uh, it's a tech startup, and I'm like in charge of the shipping and receiving of all the product that we ship in. Party time! <laughs> Pretty boring. What's the most exciting thing that uh, you're into? Like, what do you do for fun? What's a Chris Drool? Am I saying Drulius? Drulius, yeah. Wow, that's yeah. an interesting last name. Did they make fun of you for that last name when you were a kid? So, the drool part? Uh, my PE teacher did once. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what's up, Julius? Exactly, he's like... Orange Julius. Drool. Drool. Was he inside you? Uh, no. Brian! He did it again. what I do? <laughs> you have a girlfriend, Chris? No girlfriend. You listen to this show sometimes? All the time, since day one. Wow! That's so cool. The shiz and dizzle? So you've wanted to do stand-up for a while? Pretty much, and I've never had the balls to until today. How old are you? 29. That's awesome, man. 20 fucking 9, working logistics. How long have you been plotting this for? Is this your first time ever since, signing? Since you started the show, I've always been at home watching it. And, and this then, is your first time signing up? Yeah. Wow. Were you going to say something else there? I cut you off. You said uh, then. Yeah, after the show is over, I just go into depression because I'm like, I should be doing that. <laughs> Well, look at you now, man. I mean, when you go back, I mean, as a guy that's listening to this, I've also, uh, believe it or not, uh, listened to this show since episode one. And um, and that was, I mean, you had a really, for a first, I had a feeling you're a first time or sometimes we get that, uh, when they come out of one of the first, like, you know, three or four rows, it's almost usually like that. But for a while, I even thought that maybe you'd been doing it longer. That's an interesting I, thing. I could hear it in your voice, your nervousness. That's the only thing that, I, you know, you I take that away. Yeah. You know, it's going to take a couple mics, you know. Yeah. I think you nailed it with the sound bite, because when you started playing the snake thing, I actually keep snakes. So I don't know if it was like a... <laughs> Lead with that, dude. <laughs> where do you keep them? Where do you, where do you keep, keep them? them? <laughs> Double tool. What happened to your voice? Trouser <laughs> snake. In your <laughs> beard. <laughs> Hey, I, you know, I, I had the beard, but it's hot out here for a wizard. It was fucking hot. And, uh, and I, I, blew, I didn't get to do my first joke, but I had a magic wand. Ah, cause, because I met... Thank you, Tony. You All right, back to this guy. You keep snakes. Go ahead. All right. Where do you keep the snakes, Chris? How many snakes do you have? Between my cheeks. I have 11 snakes. You have what? 11 snakes. 11? Yeah. How many girls do you have? How many girlfriends do you not have? Yeah. Uh, no girlfriends, I just Tinder. Well, he's Tinder and he's, oh. he's been hit, he's been fucking on Tinder. Is that true? Yeah, I fuck. How <laughs> Give us a description of like what one of your last great Tinder dates, how that looked. Uh, she kind of catfished me, but I just went with it. <laughs> you sure she did? Ah! Oh my god, that's one of the greatest things I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. yeah. You didn't throw her back. You didn't throw her back. Yeah. Yeah. This is the most, one of the most amazingly honest, beautiful answers I've ever heard on this show, by the way. She kind of catfished me, but I went with it. <laughs> That means this chick wasn't what he was expecting all, but he's like, alright, I guess we're just drinking more than I was going to. <laughs> Let's fucking yeah. commit. Did she have a snake also? <laughs> no, she didn't. When do you, when do you, fuck, when do you fuck these girls? Do you bring them back to your place where all the snakes are at? Or? I do, yeah. Like, I'm on Tinder profile. You call, do you call your house the pit? No. <laughs> I mean, on my Tinder profile, I have pictures of me with my snakes, so like they know what they're getting into. Wow. Yeah. Oh my god. I mean, okay. So, then, so like this last, this last Tinder date, like what do you what do you do? You met her this with the one where she sort of capped at you. Let's take it step by step. When he saw her, he was a bit rattled. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's Joelberg, that's right. If you guys want to do it all at once, it'll be better next time. Uh, 
So, Chris, let's go through it. Did she message you? You message her? How does that work for you? Um, Did you slither into her DM? She actually woke me up. It was like midnight, and she sent me a, a message, and she was just like, what are you doing? And it actually woke me up, and I was like, sleeping. <laughs> and uh, she, she was like, can I come over? And I was like, I mean, I'm kind of tired, so unless you just want to like literally sleep with me. And then she was like, how about we just cuddle? And I was like, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime a girl hits you up first, she's a catfish. That's just how it is. I think that is. If a girl's texting you, she's not. Who I, I'm concerned about this catfish. Like, does she not look like her profile at all? No, she was really good with angles as far as the face. <laughs> Before. I've seen that before. She was a sneaky cat. <laughs> so, give a, like, give a, can you tell us sort of like what you were expecting? Like, can you give a description of the girl that she sort of looked like via her angles? Like, if, like, if you could describe it via a celebrity that we might recognize? Um, not really a celebrity, but just like a hot, like half black, half Asian looking girl. So, like, you know, you've never seen, you don't know any celebrities that are sort of like that? That we might recognize. Black China. Not really, no. Was she was she really bl half black, half Asian? No, that's that's like a unicorn. She, she actually was Hawaiian. Ah! Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait a second! Wait a second! Wait a second! You mean you thought she was Hawaiian? It turned out she was Samoan. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a fucking that's she the old like a can of spam. That's the old Pacific Island catfish that you got. Yeah. That's a specific, that's only in season. But he, 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 he rolled with it, though. That was pretty cool. So when you first saw her, right. what was your initial reaction? I was like, she's probably going to be good in bed, so... <laughs> yeah. What? Was, she, was she a lot bigger than you thought she was going to be? So she sent me a picture of her working out, yeah. but it was from the waist down. <laughs> and she had, she had thin... Like, she looked thin to the waist down. Yeah. What was she doing, calf raises? <laughs> and like, you got calf fish. I did, yeah. so, so, all, all I saw was face and waist down, but she had a, she had kind of a gut, but it was, it was all right. So you took her to the Slytherin common room? <laughs> she was good with angles, but then she just looked like Kurt Angle. <laughs> Wrestling. So... Alright, so you get her back to your... What happens? You guys go straight to bed. I mean, you were very direct with this lady. I by the way, by the way, I, I, I would have a feeling that if some, if some chick hit me up randomly on one of those things in the middle of the night, and I was sleeping, and I my answer was sleeping, and her next thing was, can I come over, a stranger? I would guess that she's homeless, too. <laughs> yeah. Because that's, like, aggressive. Yeah, did, did, did she smell? She didn't smell, but the weird part was, is I waited outside for my house. I waited outside my house for, really? for like, her. Like prom? Yeah. <laughs> and, and when she got dropped off, I heard the Uber driver say... It was a one, it was an earthquake. It was a I, I heard the Uber three. driver say, don't, don't I get a, a goodnight kiss or something? And I saw him, her do that. <laughs> so I was like... <laughs> Are you sure he was an Uber driver? <laughs> friend or something, but I was like, I was like, that's it's weird, but all right, she's here. I'm wondering if she steal from you. Oh, that's what she's nothing, doing. nothing. She, was, she, did she get out of the, she, actually, she got out of this Uber, was she getting out of the passenger seat? No, she actually, she, she left the lay at my house, though. Oh, God, that's her calling card. That's her calling card. <laughs> Sorry, I had, to buy, I had to get my uh, boa for the snake guy. You got laid. You got laid, man. You did it, man. man. All right, so let's get back to it. So now, so now she gets out of the car. You, you, you're waiting outside. Then what happens? And then the waiting outside, by the way, is a smart thing, Chris. You still had a chance to save yourself because with the, with the outside thing, it gives you the sidewalk option of she could walk up and be like, "Are you Chris?" And you're like, "No, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. You're much bigger than I thought you were. I mean, I'm not Chris." <laughs> So I, so I know what he's thinking with the outside thing, right? You put yourself... Because you, you don't want her coming straight to the door because then you're definitely Chris. Can you show me and Tony a picture? <laughs> Did she look, yes. No, I deleted her. I ghosted her. Did she look like Rikishi from... Do you, rem do you remember her name? <laughs> Kanisha. Wait, wait, wait. wait Kanisha? Wait, wait, wait. Kanisha don't live here no more. <laughs> wait, wait. Okay, forget it. We don't need to know her name. It's that part doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, so she gets back to uh, your bedroom. Then what happens? Or is there anything in between that way? She was Hawaiian uh, named uh, I just, I was like, well, you came here to 
to Kodo, so let's lay down and then just... Yeah, straight to the good shit. Yeah. And then what? Is he the big spoon or the little spoon? <laughs> He's the little spoon. Look at that back. Sharon Horton nailing it with a million dollar question right there. You little spoon motherfucker. It was weird. I, I tried to spoon her. But I think she was kind of self-conscious because she's, she's like, like, you're constricting me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what <are> you? <laughs> Jober. Jober. Yeah, I tried to spoon her and then like right away she like shifted. She's like, let's let's do another like cuddle position. <laughs> Alright. So the next thing you know what? You just uh start making out with her? Did you put on snake charming music? <laughs> No, I, I, uh, did you I mean, lube like, up with snake oil? Is, I mean, did you no, I just, have sex? Yeah, no, you, I, I just grabbed her butt and then... Yeah. Yeah. Grabbed her butt. All the way back to... Remember when you got laid as a kid? Like, yeah, I just grabbed her butt and we went from there. So you grab her butt, keep going. What else? Is that it? And then she, like, I didn't really want to, but she started making out with me. Yeah. <laughs> How was her breath? Was her, was her breath okay? Her breath is alright. Right. <laughs> Keep going. I mean, it's just gonna turn sexual. I'm yeah, gonna... we know it's gonna turn yeah. sexual. Yeah, that's what we want. We want it to turn sexual. You're killing it. You're in way in overtime right now. Don't make it not worth my while, Chris. Let's go. Then what happened? I turned her over and I... <laughs> Turned her over and you what, Chris? Don't you give up on me now? No, no, no. You didn't, you didn't turn her over, you rolled her over. <laughs> and then what you do? I put it inside her. <laughs> I, don't, I think he's lying. I'll call him bullshit. I swear. Nah, this sounds too real to I me. I swear. Mm. Alright, any butt stuff? I touched her there and I, and I was like, you, you, you pulled that? And she's like, yeah, I've done that. Well, her butthole? God damn! I how how soon too. did you go for the butt? I never, I didn't put my dick on her, but I touched it with my finger, and I was like... Her butt, her butthole or her cheeks? Her butthole. <laughs> Did you thought he was talking about putting his finger on her butt cheek after all? I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Tell me, at least you covered up your wand first. <laughs> Did you? Jeez, a little... I did. Little, a little so look, we found out where the monologue oh. joke came from. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So you had you had a little fun. You had a little great time. And what I happened? Did, yeah. when, did she leave afterwards, or uh, she stayed till the morning? And I told her I had to help my dad clean the garage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the old I have to help my dad. When, 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 she, when the old I have eleven snakes just isn't enough. Did I tell you I have eleven snakes? I get by. She, she feels so. She probably felt like you catfished her if she found out about the snakes. All right, Chris, you've been one of our most fun interviews in forever. 17 minutes you took out of all of our lives. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. There he goes, Chris Julius. He's on Twitter at Chris D. Comic. He's listened to every episode since episode one. He sort of just got to live some fucking cool half dream right there, probably. One more time for Chris, everybody. Come on. You guys having fun? You want to meet somebody else? Yeah. Let's do this shit. Wow, we know this guy. He's been pulled out of the bucket multiple times. He's considered an instant legend on this show. Put your hands together for Mystery Dan. It's Thank you. Thank you. So I'm driving down the freeway the other day, and I'm running kind of late. And I look ahead, and I see this message board is all lit up, and I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, another fucking traffic jam. Thank God, it was only an Amber Alert. <laughs> I, uh, I can understand Amber Alerts for stranger abductions, but I just don't understand are these parental abduction things. Those are just custody cases. The kid isn't in any danger. It's just daddy paying mommy back for not trying anal. <laughs> but I'm not totally heartless, though. I, I uh, was walking down the street the other day. I saw this poster on a telephone bowl of a, of a 
this cute little girl holding a little doggy. And I look and, uh, and I see there's all these other pictures, but they're of the damn dog. Turns out it's the dog that's missing, not the kid. I mean, for a second there, I almost cared. <laughs> Later on, I saw a dog that fit the description, but I didn't report it because I figured it might involve anal sex. Anyway, thank you very much. <laughs> Mystery Dan, you are one of the scariest looking human beings I've ever seen in my entire life. You're so frightening looking, and you come and you try to make people laugh, and we're all just we're all just wondering what you keep in your dark closet or something like that the entire time. Yes, Joel Jimenez. Well, you said he was an instant legend, but he looks more like instant oatmeal. <laughs> I don't appreciate him trying to outwizard us either. All right. It, it looks like he rents a room in the House of a Thousand Corpses. <laughs> do you do you write books or anything? Yeah. No, I just write comedy these days. When, when? He, he looks like these Hollywood Hills have eyes. <laughs> these West Hollywood Hills have eyes. <laughs> now, Mystery Dan, you are openly, we've, you've been on the show a few times, you are openly and outgoingly gay. He's yeah. a muggle? You just had Pride Week, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right on, dude. <laughs> what, did you do anything fun for Pride Week? Uh, no, nothing in particular. Did you eat anyone fun for Pride Week? <laughs> no, I, I just did my normal routines, just my Go over to a guy with the lemon snakes house. <laughs> <laughs> Give him the 12th. Oh, Mystery, Dan. You, what do you mean by your routine? Like, there must be something interesting that you did this week, a little out of the ordinary or something like that? Well, I did hang around West Hollywood longer than I normally do. What did you do? I just hung around and just talked to people. <laughs> That's all I ever do. Mystery, Dan, why are you growling at me like that? <laughs> Mystery, Dan, do you always growl like that? No, that... I think... <laughs> My wand's broken, Tony. I keep trying to turn it back into Josh Barton, but it won't work. <laughs> um, wow. That's incredible. That actually worked. The real Josh Martin. Mystery, Dan. So, how's the stand-up comedy been going? How long have you been doing this now? About eight months. About eight months. Yes. How's it going? Fantastic. I've got uh, a You're book spot. Ready for delivery. I've got a book spot at the Ice House on July second, and I'm a I'm a new member of the Ding Dong Show. Oh! oh. The longest running show in comedy store in history. Oh. Oh. <laughs> You know, they always, they always say that you, you write about what you know, right? That's what you write about what you know. Uh, and you've never touched any kids, have you? No. What? You've looked at them, though, haven't you? No. Ah! What are you doing with your hand in your pocket? <laughs> Laying cool. Do you ever go to a playground? No. Do you ever go to... <laughs> I feel like he has a bunch of kids tied up in his basement. He doesn't need to go to do a playground. You, do you ever go near playground? No. <laughs> this is not a trial. Okay. It's not a trial at all. Have you ever driven past oh, the playground? Is there a reason why you don't allow yourself to go near playground? It's court ordered. <laughs> well, I have no reason to go to playground. It, it's against it's against Megan's law. <laughs> do you do you think uh, that there's so much good kitty porn on the dark web? <laughs> Are you ever anywhere where you do see kids? Oh, the metro. The metro. My window. <laughs> and everybody knows if young metro don't trust you, I'm gonna shoot you. Um, Beautiful morning. Yeah. Uh, mystery Dan. Wow. That's an fucking. You would scare the. The reason why I ask is because you would have scared the shit out of me if I was a kid and I saw you. You do know that you look like the bad guy from Poltergeist. I. Like they made a character. A couple decades ago, scary as fuck, right? They tried to make, like, they got to use their imaginations to make it the scariest character possible, and they made it look just like you. And you are just rocking it. Like, that's my choice. Or he can be a good guy, like that old man in Home Alone. 
<laughs> oh my god, yes! There you go. Here we are being cynical and he's really, really just a so hero. so fucking funny. He's like this ice shovel tries. outside. He's the one that saves me when I get attacked from somebody else. <laughs> it was me all along. Tony, have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror and gone, ah <laughs> Uh, mystery Dad, Mystery Dad, uh, uh, what's your ideal man? Uh, I like them young, smart, well mannered. Something that is non existent these days. Looks like you're not going to be home alone any longer, my friend. <laughs> this went from. This went from home alone to homo alone real quick. <laughs> We're never alone. <laughs> Jewel keeps getting more and more Mexican as the episode goes on. For those of you paying attention, with the wizard hat and the beard, he could have been a white guy, but as it goes on, I feel like, uh... Where is it, dog? This was up. <laughs> All right, Mystery Dan. Well, we've talked to you a bunch of times before. We know everything about you. We've made every single fucking roast joke that we possibly can. <laughs> uh, so let's keep it moving, shall we? Okay. There he goes, Thank Mystery you. Dan. You guys having fun out there? <laughs> let's meet another soul. The name I just pulled out of the bucket says Ahmed Dakil. What up? So I'm an Arab. I don't know if you can tell from these Alibaba jeans. Um, well, I'm not really an Arab. I'm more of a, a B Rab or a C Rab. Uh, I like Americans. I'm like a big fan of Ariana Grande. Uh, too, too soon, too soon. Well, I guess it's too late for Aleppo. Um, yeah. yeah, well, yeah, like I'm not really a, I'm like, not very Arab, I guess. Uh, I do like, I mean, I, mean I, I don't have Arab money. I'm broke as fuck. And, uh, I drive a Ford Fiesta. It's not very pimp, it's not very baller. Uh, but I did live in Dubai. I lived in Dubai for a few years. It was pretty gnarly. A lot of hookers out there. You would be kind of shocked. Yeah, um, uh, and all. Uh, I ran into one once. I was like, uh, she kept asking me, "Hey, you got cook? You got cook?" I was like, "Damn, man!" And she's like, straight, really, pretty forward right here. I was like, "Yeah, yeah, let's go." You know what I mean? And uh, she's like, yeah, "Cook, cook." And I think she was trying to say, because all of them from different countries. I think she was trying to say, "Do you have any coke, coke?" So, so I just shoved my dick in her nose. <laughs> it worked. I guess it counts if it works. It's an interesting crowd. We're like a wild patch over here. Yeah, it's like, it's like Red Band's cronies over here or something like that. Like a bunch of dirty fucks. They just went crazy over dick in the nose. You say you're Arab. Why do I feel like you're an Italian guy from Jersey playing a character, though? Oh, Tony, I was gonna, a whitewashed Arab. Uh, he's like a genie that came from a Pier 1 Imports lamp. <laughs> Terrible deliver Rosso. <laughs> <laughs> Ahmed, how long have you been doing stand up? Oh, it's my first time. Whoa! <laughs> that makes sense. I have some career advice. Talk into the mic. Yes, I should. I should. <laughs> oh, Ahmed, how old are you? Uh, 32. 32? Oh, today's my birthday. Oh, God. Hey, oh, God. I said, uh, you look great, brown don't frown. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for work, Ahmed? I was a baking consultant. A baking consultant? Yep. What, okay. meth? <laughs> what have you been baking? Uh, like, uh... <laughs> Baklava? <laughs> Baklava, yeah, hummus, lots of falafel. Really? No, I'm just kidding. But I was a baking consultant in Dubai, yeah. So you have a lot of pressure cookers for a good reason. Definitely. <laughs> what were you baking? I didn't really get uh, a clear. Banking. A uh, banking consultant. Banking? Yeah. Like a oh, oh, banking. Oh, banking. Oh, banking. Oh, banking. Oh, oh, banking. Oh, banking. Oh, well, banking. That's a different question. Yeah, very confused. Uh, no, not a banking, banking consultant. Oh, no, a banking consultant. Like gringo. You can't just leave an N out of a word sometimes. Hey, I'm Arab. I'm Arab. We leave words out sometimes. <laughs> So a banking consultant in Dubai seems like a pretty good job, no? Uh, it, it's 
a, a suit and tie type of job, and yeah. I was born out here, so and I worked on set prior to that, so like it was very difficult for me to make that just. What did you work? What set did you I work? I used to on? work. I used to work in the film industry. What? what so what sets did you uh, work on? I was working with a production company. We made commercials. It was really fun. I did photography and. Wait, you went from uh, this. This this went from awesome to bad real quick. You just oh, said you made yeah. movies, and then I asked what movies. It wasn't movies. You I were, said oh, you were on set. Yeah, you said, I was on set. Yeah. And then it, then you said photography. And then I did I set. Like, I did set photography as well. Yeah. On what though? On what production? Like uh, we did a Nissan Super Bowl commercial, date, like Match. dot com stuff like that. Any Camel cigarette ads? Dumbledore. So, you, how long have you lived in LA? Uh, um, I was born out here. I, just, I moved back a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago. How yeah. long were you in Dubai? I was in Dubai. Uh, on, on, I was based out of there. Um, I was on and off uh, based out of there for the last three years. And I just saved up some money, moved to Mexico for like four months. Like, What'd uh, you do in Mexico for four months? Uh, Blend in. <laughs> <laughs> What did you do in Mexico for four months? Uh, I did photography. Yeah. And um, ate octopus tacos. Octopus tacos. What's the hookers in Dubai like? Oh my god. Octopus tacos. I thought <laughs> octopus tacos. I think you made it all up. Plentiful. I thought Dubai wasn't the place you can't even hug in public. So is it? So that's that's the paradox about being out there. And actually, I'm probably getting in trouble for talking about oh, it because you're like shit. super intense about yeah. like that. Pull, pull yeah. the mic up to well, you. How do you pull check out a girl who's wearing like a whole sheet? So uh, you have to talk into that end part of that. Mic. So make sure it's Dubai, a no thread count. Dubai is not like that. Dubai is super liberal, super super liberal, and uh, women dress like super, very very liberal over there. What do you mean when you say liberal? I don't even know. Hey, is there any slutty? Is that what you mean by slutty? Or what do you mean liberal? liberal. What, what is liberal in Dubai? That's, that's the, the PC ad. Yeah, exactly. Be a little bit more descriptive. They get the word liberal. Women dress what is liberal. liberal. Bernie, they dress like Bernie Sanders? <laughs> More like Ariana Grande. So liberal. They dress like Ariana Grande. I just made that joke. All right, stop saying Ariana Grande. Yeah, yeah, that's that's not a way to make the white people like you. Yeah. <laughs> Ariana Grande, Ariana Grande. It's like, hate me have Beetlejuice. You, have you keep like like talking about Ariana yeah. Grande, have you, have you ever thought about joining ISIS? I think that's a different... They wouldn't place. accept me. They'd probably, like, behead my ass. You look like you got kicked out of ISIS for having too much swag. <laughs> true story. True story. Like, like, you, like you try to teach them how to dug you. Actually, like... like <laughs> the funny story is I went to Libya and I got detained there by a militia. Like, Ooh. that was last year. What was yeah. that like? Be a little... Yeah. Tell Ooh, us you a little a something selfie? about that. I was taking photographs there. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And you got detained? Yeah. What, you, what was that? That was pretty intense. It was like the first day I got there, and I was uh, doing photography. They also do it intense. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, intense. I have a lot of nervous habits. Like, my first time up here, I haven't been in front of as many people before. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Relax. What? Relax. What did you just say? I, said I have a lot of nervous habits. I haven't been in front of this many Talking to the before. fucking microphone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like the most hey. important thing of this whole thing. Got it, got it. Okay, so got you got detained, and then what? Oh. What is that? They make you sit in a cement room? What is it? They handicap Libya is scary as fuck. For Libya those is of you. fucked I can up. tell there's some ignorant fucks out there. There's some gnarly. <laughs> so I want to make sure that you're all caught up with uh, your education. Libya is super fucked up, man. So um, it cut like I knew it was fucked up as soon as I landed. Uh, we were waiting for our bags, and a kid came out of the baggage carousel with a fucking Beretta in his in his hip. He was like 15. I was like, that's not my bag. <laughs> this shit's fucked up. I shouldn't have came here. And then. And literally, like the first day, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go take photographs. I asked my cousins, hey, is it cool to photograph? And Do you like, see how you're talking with your hand and with into the mic and all this stuff, and how you just gotta laugh? Do you see that? Ah, cool, you, cool. You see what... thank you guys. No, 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 no. I thought you were just gonna soak it in that once, but not really. <laughs> not really take the note overall. Te give, give a man a finch. I, I apologize, Tony. You are oh. fucking awesome, man. Do you, do, do, wait, you really? Do you listen to the show from Absolutely, Dubai? Absolutely, man. I'm a huge fan of yours. Man. They, they allow this show in Dubai. They fucking. It's illegal. I can. I can, I can, I can, I can get two they years don't. for it. They don't allow this show in Dubai. The most illegal live podcast. But I know how much of a fan of uh, you wanted to Jake if you are. Yeah. I brought that up to you once. And Where? Uh, out here. Oh, you were here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. You were here. Cool. 
What happened in Libya? So back to Libya. The first day I went out to photograph, yep. um, I saw an, an ATM, a decrepit ATM. It was like spurting out oil. And I was like, dude, this is like a perfect, yeah. uh, this is this is explaining the entire country, like the uh, oil, money, fucked up place. So I photographed yeah. it. Yeah. And a militia man's like, hey, what the fuck you doing? I was like, oh shit. And he had an AK and he grabbed me and he fucking just took me with him. Luckily, my cousin saw it. He was like, like not that far from the, the yeah. little area which I got detained at. Yeah. The guy grabbed me, they handcuffed me, they uh, interrogated me, they put like guns in my face, and they were like, what the fuck are you doing? Who are you? My, my Arabic is kind of broken, because I, I grew up out here. And, Can you um, give us an example of what you sound like when you're begging for your life? <laughs> oh my god, I'm a really good <laughs> <laughs> What is that thing you just said? It sounded like I live already. I said, I, 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 I swear to God, I'm back in America. I'll join you guys right now. I'm with you guys. I'm with you guys? Wait, you're with them? You told them that you're with them? I'm like, let's cut some heads off. I'm totally down. What'd you really say, Ahmed? No, I'm just kidding. I was like, no, man, I'm sorry. I'm just a photographer. Like, I, I'm not a journalist. I'm not a spy. And that's what that sounds like? Say it one more time in your language? Arabic's intense, man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm not okay. Say it one more time. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Wait, I thought you were telling us more about the story. Is it? Did you just... Wait, that sounds... Oh, oh, wait a second. Wow. wow. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, you may have been wondering. Oh. Seems as though we've been missing one wizard all along. Make some noise for the great Jeremiah Watkins. I didn't realize Harry Potter had a gay magician. <laughs> Hello, Tony. Ahmed, <laughs> <laughs> do you know who that is? Um, he's uh, one of your band members. <laughs> oh, very good. Wow, you're, 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 you I'm answer genius. that I'm like you thing. answer that like I'm about to detain you on that. <laughs> I you got a fucking sword, so... Just like a stupid muggle to respond. Wow. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm at, did they take your camera? Did you get it back? They didn't. They delete all my photos, but I got my camera back. Any other parts of uh, being detained in which you want to share with us? Was there anything else? Um, Is that it? Really? Did they kiss you on the lips or anything? Scariest part. Scariest part to you. Scariest part was my mom told me not to go and she didn't know I was in the country. So immediately, immediately, oh, you're, like, immediately you're like, if I die here, my, I, I, my mom's going to be so pissed. She told me not to go. Yeah. Yeah. It sucks. Can you say yeah. one more phrase of Arabic? Yeah. yeah. Say happy birthday in Arabic. Yeah. Can you sing happy birthday in Arabic? I, I can, I can. Try it. Um, Expelliarmus! <laughs> Can I, can I be sincere really quickly? I just want to be sincere. I think all this stuff about like your life is really interesting. I don't think you need the Ariana Grande stuff. Like at all. When you talk about yourself, it's like I want to listen to you. It's really yeah. great. You know? Stop. Oh, I appreciate yeah. it. No doubt about it. When you were when you were telling me when you got lost. I was when you were actually just talking to us, like how you talk with your natural movements and everything, it was much more comfortable. And I the stuff it. that you can talk about is funnier than the stuff that is the too soon and that we've heard and those references. Yeah, know? yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's a little hacky, for sure. There you go. Great for your first time, man. Hey, thank you, appreciate it, man. I'm a huge fan of you in our band. Nine of Hills. From the other side of the world and back, Ahmed to Kill gets his first time ever doing stand-up live in front of you people. That's what it's like. the bucket. Well, this wiz this new wizard is giving me one intense stare. I don't even know how to handle this. You are focused. Did I say something that you didn't like? You are wanted as a subject to serve the Dark Lord. <laughs> he looks like Edward Scissorhands. <laughs>
I have no idea what he's doing, but it's so funny. It's Corey Feldman. He looks like Michael Jackson. <laughs> Courtney Cox. Quit while you're ahead, young boy. <laughs> Let's pull another name out of the bucket. Let's see what happens here. Put your hands together for Calvin Edwards. Oh, there's no Calvin Edwards. Right. Calvin Edwards. Alright, this looks like a new name. Put your hands together for Hank North. Hank? Is there a Hank? Put your hands together for Jihan Sabir. What's up? Um, every time I meet new people, uh, they always look at my big, beautiful eyes. Um, and I hate that shit because my tits are down here. Like, I didn't spend two hours finding the perfect shirt and bra combo for you to look at my eyes, you know what I mean? Like, what I'm saying is buy me a drink. I'm poor, <laughs> thank you. Um, you guys, I'm a nanny and uh, I uh, decided that it's my duty to make my kids the wokest kids on the block. Yeah. Uh, so I only teach them facts about historical black figures in America. Uh, so in their world, white people have contributed nothing. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I got my four-year-old who's wearing suits and bow ties selling bean pies and papers on the playground, you know? Uh, my seven-year-old, she's like, she's in class, she's like, excuse me, sister, but this very oppression of the body... Yeah, go ahead. ...of the body which brings life into this world is a very slap in the face of my ancestors who fought and died for it. And the teacher's like, me, I already said he'd go to the bathroom. <laughs> like, <laughs> Jihan Sabir! You've been on the show before, right? Yeah, we learned something really great about her last time at Pat Reagan. Oh, really? Oh, did we? Was it great? You know? Oh! I do remember that. Jeremiah? <laughs> Pat? She anybody? has had sex with he who shall not be named. <laughs> physically hurts. Ow! I think I tore a fucking ass or something. I think I just Imagine how I feel. You know what I mean? Do you ever sometimes think about that night with Pat? You ever reflect on it? Um, no, not anymore. Oh, <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> I'm very important. I mean, I can picture that. Yeah. How was he? He was alright. Yeah. Oh, oh shit! Yeah. Did you take a ride on his Nimbus 2000? <laughs> white guy either. Do you, have a, do you have a pet black people's meat that kind of Yeah, he's on Black Planet, you black know. Planet, black Planet. He wasn't your first white guy though, right? Of course not. No. Is he the last well, Why do you say of course not? What the fuck is that supposed to mean, Willie? I, mean, I feel like you have a good personality. Yeah. You can get any guy you want. <laughs> Whoa. need to be fucking white men. I, I've been on this whole diatribe for like a couple of years. I heard a jumping ship before, but uh... I'm, trying to get, I'm, trying, 
I'm trying to get you white guys laid by this black pussy, man. That's what I'm trying to do. Willie, the finish it. Willie Hunter is a Gryffindor in the streets and a Slytherin in the streets. <laughs> Unstoppable force. It's getting more powerful every week, by the way. If you're a fan of comedy, please. His power is growing. Jesus Lord, it's unbelievable. Alright, Chief. <clears throat> Have you been with a white guy since then? No. <laughs> so the, it's like they say, once you go white, you go back right. to black. Yeah! <laughs> What do you do for a living, Shihan? I'm a nanny. Oh, that's right. Is this, a, is this a rich white family? Of course. Where are they living? And Jewish. Hollywood, here. Hollywood. In the hills. Hmm. Hmm. Kids sometimes assholes to you? My kids? No. Other people's kids? Definitely. I like, one time I volunteer babysat for their neighbors, and the little boy was like, Ew, you're brown. That means you, you're made out of poo. Oh. <laughs> Child so much in my life. That's really Yeah. Just uh, how did you respond to that? That's just I, as, like, what am I gonna do? Like, oh, tell me. I can't just, go to jail. <laughs> you know what I mean? You like, beat his ass. <laughs> I was weighing it though. I you, was like, how much time will I get for like? Wait, how old, how, how old is he? Like two or three though? Yeah. Like, the no, kid's probably like innocent. No, right? it's like five. If you were wearing that oh, scarf when he said that, you should have beat his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I was not wearing the scarf, but I did have an afro. Kids say the darnest mm. things. <laughs> No, my kids are cool. Like, I don't know. Because they came from New York, and they had black nannies before. I have friends that, that so they know are nannies. You said, so they're not assholes? No, so they know how to talk down to them? <laughs> no, so they don't ask race uh, They don't ask race questions. Okay. You know I, have, I, mean? I have friends that are uh, there are a lot of nannies, too. And, like, how, how are the parents? Do you travel with them? Or, no. Or uh, do they treat you right? Is yes. the husband, do you make any moves on you or anything? I wish. <laughs> Oh shit! From, from Patty Reagan to Daddy Reagan. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, they're really good to me. They actually just got me a new car like a month ago. Wow. Wow. Oh, yeah. Do they have nanny cams that you know of? Uh, no. Is it a company car? Like you got to give it back after? Yeah, if I don't work for them anymore, it's a lease, so like I just oh. turn it back in. But I'm That's good. What's up, though? Yeah, That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Right. Huh. What do you do for fun when you're not doing stand-up and when you're not nanning? What's like a hobby or you do, do you have a nightlife or thing that you like to do sometimes? Or do you I practice try? black girl magic? <laughs> oh, that was great. Answer the question. boring like I really only do comedy and there must be something that you do once in a while or lately or something that happened out of the ordinary she or takes off a like head wrap to reveal to d fold her fuck that one up uh, try again later oh. Oh. offer you a position in the Slytherin household. <laughs> um, I did have like this weird Go encounter ahead. with a guy the yeah. other night. Yeah, tell us more. Uh, well, I was... Wait a second, did you, did you say you were uh, Hawaiian and then... Uh... <laughs> Room, yeah, it's, technically, it's a call black. But, oh. Uh, oh. So tell us about this uh, with this guy. What happened? Uh, I was walking to my friend's apartment at night, and thanks for it. <laughs> thanks for it. And uh, this dude was following me. He stalked me, basically. He followed me uh, like a few blocks. I went up. I like went to my friend's apartment, but she wasn't there, so I was waiting for her. And he came up this dark driveway with like this giant gym bag. Every light went out on the street, and it was Hagrid, and he said, You're a wizard, Harriet. 
the driveway like are, do you go up the driveway already like well, yeah i was i had already i had already went up the driveway went how many how many paces ahead of this guy were you um uh, like a good 20 20 steps but how long were you was he 20 steps behind you how long was your walk from where you were coming from how long was he behind it wasn't you? that long but like i think he stopped along the way because i looked back and he wasn't there and i was like cool he's not following me he's just like walking in the same it general direction and then this nigga dimensional. came up like the fucking driveway <laughs> out of the darkness and I only saw big ass eyes, and I'm like, "What? Uh, can I help you with something?" <laughs> uh, can I get your number? <laughs> that was it. Oh, that's, that's that was that's it. Pretty cool. Yeah, that's what he said, and I was like, "No, because you're stalking me, and I'm not really into that." <laughs> a letdown to this very long tail. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, did you give him your number? Hell no. 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 What? Oh, what? It, what if you wrote down his number and he took it and he put it in the gym bag and you just saw it was a bunch of other numbers in the gym bag? <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, <laughs> he's collecting numbers. <laughs> he was mad afterwards though, because I was like at the gate and he walked back by me and he was on the phone. And he, was like, yeah, you boost. he was like, yes. <laughs> he was really mad. It was a long. But he did not rate me and I was great. <laughs> That's good. No. He's like, what? At least, at least, that's, that's good. At least he has a friend that he can call. Right, you know what I mean? Yeah. Someone that actually gave them their number. <laughs> Jihan, it was nice to meet you. Yeah. And there she goes, Thank Jihan you. Sabir. Jihan, Jihan, Jihan. Well, let's do something fun. We're going to go back to the bucket in just a second. We have, uh, we have a regular that does a spot every single week that does not come out of the bucket but is an absolute fucking machine that writes and performs a brand new minute every single week live on this show to hundreds and th hundreds of thousands of comedy absorbers around the world. Comedy absorbers. Yes, comedy absorbers. Put your hands together for her. You know her, you love her. It's the great Allie McCoskey. <laughs> practice my handwriting in middle school. All of the pretty girls had a really nice handwriting and I wanted to be pretty so I thought I had to change my handwriting and <laughs> the rest would just somehow happen. <laughs> I don't know why I wasn't writing guys notes like, hey, do you like me? Nothing like that. Um, and I don't think anyone would appreciate a nicely written suicide note. <laughs> No one's going to look at that and be like, wow, such a loss. But look at that penmanship. I, uh, I, I'm not into kinky stuff. Um, sometimes I'll tell guys that I'm really into role playing, but it's just for stuff that I need. I had a guy come over and I was like, hey, I hope you're cool with this. I really like role playing. He's like, yeah, whatever you want. I was like, okay, you're my chiropractor. <laughs> Place? No. <laughs> no. It's based in a place of, I gotta get a new minute. Yeah, yeah totally. And, and, and another very, 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 very impressive one. Another one with solid stuff, yes. This is the best Malfoy has ever looked. <laughs> <laughs> now I have the same cadence. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Allie, what else is going on in life? Another minute of fun material. What yeah. else? I'm uh, still on Accutane. Uh, which, <laughs> which, which pretty much clears my skin, but it dries out my body. Um, so my, I think it was his mouth watering. Oh, that's the grossest thing, please. There's nothing to talk about dry skin. One more time. What's wrong with you people over here? One more time. Is that your fucking coach over there? Hey, Jeffrey. Where coach, are you doing? Coach Slurp. 
But, it's a uh, weird section. Is this a new thing that's happening? Red Band's cronies over on this dirty wall over here? Hey, talk about a pussy! Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Brian, ask her if she ever fought it in her hand and smelled it! Yeah. You like breakfast in bed? It's a weird fucking red man crew. Red, 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 the red man. Red, 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 red. <laughs> 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 Accutane. So, uh, what do you mean when you say dry out? We talking, uh. Well, I just have to use like a lot of moisturizer on my face, but pretty much. Oh, you mean your face? Your skin looks good. <laughs> Thank you. It's in there. But my lips have been so chapped, and I'll just like peel off. at Joelberg. Yeah. Yeah, she said her lips and uh, I, said, oh, yeah, I like, can't help because last time I right, moving up. <laughs> you need to put on an invisibility cloak. <laughs> Allie, Allie, yeah. what, what drug are you on? Um, Accutane. Expelliarmus! <laughs> okay. <laughs> This isn't gonna be funny. Now you guys just know that I have dry skin. <laughs> no, it is funny. Go on, Holly. Go on. Tell so us. So now my lips are chapped and like they're just peeling and I'm just tearing right. and off. And you drop the log and then what? <laughs> Monologue. Monologue. <laughs> so you're peeling it off the lips. <laughs> Walking the mile, walking the mile, and then what happens? Well, it's all ruined now, but I'm, I peel off the dead skin and I just Ooh. think this is the old me. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys? I love you. I, I love you. She, she has a short haircut. How I was just she, about to ask you guys. Uh, how long has she, how long have you had? This has been like a month now. Yeah, so you, you, were, you were blonde for the first, uh, I think, a few you, weeks, right? Yeah, you just I just, did that. I haven't had out. time to bleach it. <laughs> <laughs> I was Rabbit. listening to Eminem on the way over here, and I secretly was hoping someone would think that I was Eminem driving a Subaru. <laughs> Do you ever peel the skin off your lips and then uh, hold it out the window and drop it and think, e uh, <laughs> you, you gotta lose yourself? And then, uh, <laughs> you, you better never let it go. You only get one shot. It's the name of my Netflix special, by the way. I, one shot available on Netflix. What is she like? So it's been a month, so that means you've cut it again. Sure. Uh -huh, I keep cutting it. Do you go to a black barbershop? Black barbershop, that's exactly what I was going to ask. Because no, I, I, I know one. I was, uh, I was going to, Wait, but then my friend cuts hair, so it's like cheap. You, don't, you, 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 you just need, need a, a razor. That's I know, I, need. I like to support razor. my friend. You, could, you should get a lineup. You need a lineup. You need a lineup. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I so it. when I first got it cut, I did uh, one on the side and then two on top. You look top. like G.I. Jane. You need a haircut. But it grows so fast, so I feel like I just keep having to get it cut. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's not easy being a guy. I just like to see where it gets. <laughs> it's not easy being a girl who looks like a guy. W wizard? What? You ever think about cutting your hair? Never. It is part of who I am. Uh, he looks like Wednesday Adams with a makeover. Looks <laughs> <laughs> like Monday Adams. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ali Mikovsky with another new minute. There she goes. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. All right, you guys want to go to the bucket one more time and then put this bumper out, huh? You guys might be able to do better than that. You want to go to the bucket one more time and then you can show? Jesus Christ, it's like fucking pulling teeth out here. All right.
right, this looks like a new name. Let's see what happens. Put your hands together for Carlos Feliciano. Donald Trump? That's a joke right there. All right, thank you. Do you know how hard it is to explain to people when you're Latino that you're not Mexican in LA? You know how hard that is? I'm Puerto Rican. That's exactly the same reaction I get everywhere I go because I'm usually the only one. You know how hard it is to be Latino? You, I can't dance. I'm a lousy lover, but I will stab you. All right? All right, thank you. Thank you for that. Bad jokes. All right, continuing on. I'm 35 years old. I just turned 35 last week. Thank you for that. And um, I got my first dick pic. It was, it was interesting. I wasn't asking for that. I was asking more for uh, money and a girlfriend, but I got a dick pic. So I decided to go with that. So um, I knew that it was a, it was a mistake. The, the moment I got the dick pic, but I embraced it. You know, I said, thank you, universe, for this. But I texted the person back, I said, Dad, this text is meant for mom. Thanks. <laughs> All right, let's continue this uh, charades. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly what you said, exactly. Um, <laughs> wow, there you go, Carlos Feliciano. <laughs> First time doing stand-up, right? No. Oh, no. okay. Uh, He's been doing it for a yes, while. Yes, 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 yes. Can How I, long have you been doing it? It's okay. Six months. Six months. Oh. Yes. Can yeah. I say I do not know what it is like to be Latino, and I do not care. <laughs> Latino drums. Um, Carlos, this is interesting. So six months. You're 35 now. And you don't look a day over 62, which is really cool. Uh, what, do you, what do you do for a living? Uber driver, and I also am an AV tech. For, AV tech? Yes, I uh, work in conferences. Part time, demento. Yes, part time. <laughs> what kind of car are you driving on the Uber? Kia Soul 2015. Expelliarmus! <laughs> what's, your, uh, what's your Uber driver rating? 4.8. Ooh. Oh, that's... Why do I feel like it's a 4.7, but he's rounding up? Right. Uh, right. 4.8. Uh, 4.8 sharp? Do you know what you did wrong for this point? No, I don't know. You sort of know, though. Yeah, right? Do you, you talk have... too much? No, actually, I got to think this is excellent conversation. Okay. You, you, you get, like, an Uber, you get, like, um... Anybody who would leave excellent conversation at all, ever... Leaves it for everybody. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anybody who would leave that comment leaves it for. Everybody. Have you had someone vomit in your car? No. You ever hooked up with somebody? No. Are you leasing your car? Yes, you, you have. have. Have you hooked up with a passenger? No, I've been hooked up with a passenger, but I was called in one day. I was called the N word and a Jew all in the same day. Hell yeah! It was the first week of me moving out here. Can, you, can you tell us the context? They, they think you're Hold on, wait, wait, guys. Can you give us the context in which you were called the N word? Um, this girl was drunk pretty much. I picked her up and she was being obnoxious and she wanted me to take her to like four different places and I said only I'm only gonna take you to your destination and she kept on just rambling obscen obscenities to me. Wow. Can, you, can you say some of the obscenities? Uh, the n-word, that's one of the obscenities. I'm not what gonna, word can, are you say, can you yeah. say the word? Yeah, ninja, 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 ninja. Can you use it in a sentence? <laughs> Can you tell it, it, me it, the origin of the it word? It rhymes with tiger. <laughs> tiger? Yes. Can you go to a niger? <laughs> niger? <laughs> Nigeria? It rhymes with tiger. <laughs> with Gigi. Carlos. I don't, think I, don't, I, don't, I, don't I don't think your career as a songwriter is going to make it, Carlos. <laughs> Was she, was she a white, white lady? white lady. Yes, she was a white, white so, lady. Yeah, yeah, she was in the way. Yeah. 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 tricks and strangers. That rhymes with tiger. Right. What else did she call you? Any other obscenities? No, no, no. Instead of telling us the obscenities, can you, can, can you just uh, rhyme with them? Like tiger? <laughs> tiger. Okay. What was another one thing she called you? Shit. Shit. Shithead. <laughs> you just said it. You said shithead. Did she call you? Did she call you a bike? Yes. She called me a bike. Oh. Did she call you a blunt? A blunt, oh, yes. Wow, she did. Whoa. She crossed a. Uh... She called me a. Uh... Did she call you a jipper head? <laughs> <laughs> did she call you a whiny, sick, widow, teeth, glove? Red pad! Red 
not bad. Hermione, Hermione, not now. I'm 30% through. <laughs> Wow, Carla. So, what? I mean, what changed in your life six months ago that you decided to start doing this to yourself? Um, <laughs> I just was going to come. I, I moved out here, didn't have nothing to do, so I wanted to meet people, so I just started just going up to the open mics. Did your accent just get a lot thicker? Yeah. Oh, all of a sudden, the movie was like, your parents are still in Puerto Rico? Uh, yes, between Puerto Rico and Florida. You ever go back and visit? Yes, But they want to live in America. <laughs> they want to live in America. Yeah? Yeah. What do they do? They're retired. My dad's an uh, ex-Navy. They're retarded? Navy? <laughs> the Puerto Rican Navy? No, the U.S. Navy. Oh, very good. Yeah, I always good. thought Puerto Ricans were good at love making. I thought it was a stereotype of Puerto Ricans. Is that wrong? Oh, no, domestic now. Puerto, <laughs> Puerto Ricans have sex with all their clothes on. They just like slip it in and like. <laughs> all, a lot, out of all the uh, Latin um, uh, ethnicities, they are just the most to like not give a fuck. Like they're just about the fucking part. I do believe. This is from my own uh, self taught analysis. <laughs> They like pull the panties to the side type of fucking where where, where, where Mexicans where, where like Mexican women feel like they have to get naked because they need to be made love to. Right? Oh my god, that's hilarious. I lost everybody on there. Okay, there you go. Uh, uh, red band section. Show the men. They have a point. They always keep the do rag on too. They keep a do rag. Oh boy. Well, we're all just fizzling out here at the end. Uh, there goes Carlos Feliciano. <laughs> a special shout out to a couple of my favorite people in the world that are here right now. If you know me and my uh, comedy background at all, you know one of my favorite things of all time is Jackass. And I'd like to give a big shout out to Rick Kozik and Wee Man up there. And <laughs> some other fuckers. <laughs> we gotta get you up here sometime, Wee Man. Will you come do the show sometime? Hey. Oh, wow. That... <laughs> Wee Man really knows how to work a live crowd. <laughs> Maybe to close the show. Thanks, Wee Man. Wow. I, I blow him all the way off. For nothing. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. We love you, buddy. We love yes. you too, Rick Kozik, as always. Guys, we made it through Kill Tony, episode 200 something. Jerome Horton, every Sunday night at 10 p.m., you can watch the show that he wrote, and he's on. Yeah. Crossing the streams. It's I'm Dying Up Here. It's my new favorite show on Showtime. The, the Carmichael Show on NBC is motherfucking Willie Hunter, and it's on Netflix Woo! now. Wednesday nights. Every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on NBC. The drawing Woo! from Ryan Chaiba while you sat there like lazy asses. Look what he did. Connect four. Like Follow Jerron Horton and Jerron Horton, Willie Hunter and okay. Willie Hunter, right? Yes. Jeremiah Watkins, ladies and gentlemen. He's on Twitter, Jeremiah Watkins. What else, Jeremiah? And Jeremiah, stand up on social media and I'll be on the Monster oh. Energy Drink Tour with Tony Hinchcliffe. Yes, yes, Jeremiah's going to be on a lot of the dates with me for the Monster Energy Outbreak Tour. Wait a second, wait a second, something from Wee Man. Back. I will be on the show. Oh! Pat Reagan's comedy outlet. Chad is available on all outlets. Pat Chad. I love Pat Reagan's music. He's on all social media outlets. And Patty Reagan. And the, yes? Accio Dead Parrot. Oh! Great Joel Jimenez is on Twitter at Mostly Sorry. Reach out to me. I love it. I love you guys. Thanks for coming. And Josh Mark Comic. That's the episode, everybody. There you go. Kill Tony. You guys. We did it. Longest running show in the history of the comedy store. The Ding Dong Show is up next in this room.
all going to be drinking, having fun on the patio if you want a high five or something after the show.